السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ان الحمد للہ نحمد و نستعین ہو و نستا غفر ہو و نہ اوز بلّہ من شرور انفسنا و من سی آتی امالنا میں یہ دہ اللہ فلا مدل اللہ و میں یدل الفلا ہادی اللہ و اشد اللہ 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 واحد لا شریق اللہ و اشد ان محمد ان ابدہ رسول اما بعد فعین خیر الحدیث کتاب اللہ و خیر الحدی حدی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و شر العموری محدثات وکل محدثت بدعا وکل بدعۃ دولالہ وکل دولالت فنار مائی ڈیئر برادرز اینڈ سسٹرز آئی ویلکم یو ٹو دا سیکنڈ ایپیسوڈ آف اسٹرانگ فاؤنڈیشن دا اسلامک کورس آر سبجیکٹ ان دس ایپیسوڈ آر ٹین آبسٹیکلس آن دا پاتھ آف سیکنگ نالج ان دا لاسٹ ایپیسوڈ وی ٹاک اباؤٹ دا امپورٹنس آف سیکنگ نالج دیر آر پیپل ہو سے وی آر بیٹر آف بینگ اگنورینٹ and we saw that allah has taught us fala takunanna min al jahilin never be from the ignorant so i believe inshallah that you are with us and you believe that seeking knowledge is compulsory for every single muslim if you don't then you should see the previous episode inshallah and then come to this program but now we are going to talk about the obstacles ahead there are people who have fallen into this misguidance of staying away from knowledge We are not talking about them in this program. We are talking in this program about those people who accept that seeking knowledge is compulsory. Now they have saved themselves from that misguidance and they have come to realize that it's compulsory to seek knowledge. We are going to talk of 10 obstacles due to which a person who has accepted that seeking knowledge is compulsory may not be able to reach his real goal of getting knowledge. These are obstacles in between us and islamic knowledge so let us start inshallah as i said to you if you are with me in the revision by the time we finish these 10 inshallah you can learn at least 8 9 maybe all 10 but you have to revise with me whenever i tell you to revise let us start the first point the first point is intention my dear brothers and sisters what should be our intention in seeking islamic knowledge as the first hadith of sahih bukhari it says innam al amalu bin niyat deeds are based on intentions our deeds amal are based on our intentions if the intention is good the deed is accepted if the intention goes wrong the deed is destroyed so my brothers and sisters what should be our intention our niyah in acquiring knowledge our intention should be i want to get knowledge for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of allah's pleasure i want to get knowledge so that i can remove my ignorance which allah has said never be from the ignorant i don't want to be from the ignorant i want to remove my ignorance and that is the reason i'm seeking knowledge i want to seek knowledge so that i can worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how he wants me to worship him i want to seek knowledge so that i can avoid the haram the wrong and do the right thing these are good intentions I want to get knowledge so that I can tell about Islam to someone else be a means for saving him from jahannam help him to save him from ignorance a person makes an intention I want to get islamic knowledge so that I can stand in the defense of Islam this is good intention now we find there are wrong intentions which are possible we will listen to a very very strong hadith from sunan ibn maja authentic hadith Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Man ta'allam al-ilma, whoever acquires knowledge, liyubahi bihi al-ulama, so that his name is counted among the scholars. Liyujariya bihi sufaha, or to defeat some ignorant person. He is acquiring knowledge to defeat someone. I want to win. I want to defeat him. Yasrifa bihi wujuh al-nas ilayhi, or to turn the faces of people towards him, that nobody is looking at me. I want people to look at me." So if this is the intention the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said adkhalahu llahu jahannam allah will put him in the fire of hell allahu musta'an may we seek allah's refuge from this my brothers and sisters it is very important our intention should be good if our intention is wrong the actions will be wrong our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a hadith recorded in sunan tirmidhi with authentic chain of narration he said ma dibani jai ani ursila fi ghanam to hungry wolves which are let free among sheep bi afsad laha min hirs al mari ala al mali wa sharfi li dinihi if a person has greed for money and honor 
I want name, I want honor. I want money, 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 greed for money. See, acquiring money is not wrong. Using money for good causes, alhamdulillah. But if it goes to the level of greed, hirs, if a person gets greed for money, if he gets greed for honor, I want honor, I came, you didn't honor me. I want honor. So if a person gets that greed in him, these two cause so much damage to his deen. Lidinihi, that two hungry wolves, if they are let free among sheep, they won't cause so much harm. Because these two wolves won't kill all the sheep. They will kill until they get enough to eat. And once their stomach is full, they won't kill. But these two, the greed for money and honor, they destroy a person's deen. So my brothers and sisters, these things should not destroy the best ibadah. The first ibadah which was mentioned in the first wahi of the Quran, ilm, seeking knowledge is ibadah. And this should be for only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It should not be for show off. And I'll also tell you, there are people, shaitan tells them, see, you're doing this to show off. Better you don't seek knowledge. <laughs> Look at how shaitan deceives people. He says, you are seeking knowledge, you are listening to this lecture, you are going in this halaqa and this dars, you are listening to this program only for show off. You are writing and making notes, ah, this is all show off. Better you don't do. He won't say, you do it with good intention. You do this and do it with good intention. So this way, if you start listening to shaitan, he tells a person, you are offering salah in the first saf, you are just doing it for show off. You are giving charity, ah, you are doing it for show off. Then a person will stop from all good deeds. Among the scholars, some have also said, if you stop from a deed out of the fear of show off, this itself is for people you have stopped. You stop for people. So this is also a type of show off. Allah mustan. So my brothers and sisters, don't let shaitan defeat you. If you have decided to do something good, even if your intention went wrong, correct your intention. But don't stop that good deed. You decided to give sadaqa, now shaitan will scare you out of intention. Don't listen to shaitan. See, I will give you an example. From Sahih Bukhari, Omar Adlaw, he said once to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I love you more than everyone else except my own self. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Omar, you have not yet believed. So Omar Adlaw immediately corrected himself. He immediately said, O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, now I love you more than everybody, even more than my own self. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Alan ya Omar, Omar, now you have believed. Umar Radlam immediately corrected himself, meaning if your intention went wrong, inshallah one second you can set your intention right. But the intention can go wrong also in one second, so we need to constantly look at our niya, at our intention inshallah. This is point number one. Now there are many people with good niya, good intention, but they fall into the second pit. They fall and they get stopped because of the second obstruction. That is, they don't do anything. With only good intention, you don't get ill. There are so many people with good intentions who know since the past last 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, they came to know that seeking knowledge is faridatun ala kulli muslim. Fars on every single muslim. They came to know. But they never sought knowledge. They never did anything. Years have gone by, months have gone by. If you know since the past one year, six years, six months, how many days, but we need to do something to get knowledge. So they don't do anything to get knowledge. And we have heard the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, Knowledge is acquired by study. So if you want to get knowledge, you have to study. So they don't do any studies, then they're not going to get knowledge. So my brothers and sisters, our second point is mujahida, struggle. The struggle to get knowledge. When a person struggles on the path of seeking knowledge, it is then which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him that knowledge. Good intention is step one. But this is not all. We need to do something to get that knowledge. And how beautifully Yahya bin Abi Kafir rahimahullah has said it as recorded by Imam Muslim in his introduction. He's a tabai and a person of knowledge and he shared with us that secret. He said, La jism. You don't get knowledge with comfort of the body. If your body is very comfortable, he says you're not going to get knowledge like this. We have to give up some comfort. Today you are seeing this lecture, surely you have given up some comfort, you are not sleeping in your bed. If a person is very comfortable, the next scene is he is going to sleep, it is gone. You have to give up some comfort. He says with rahatil jism, 
with comfort of the body, you don't get knowledge. And when we look at the stories of the scholars, we look at the struggle, the effort which they put in to get knowledge, to become scholars. Let us look at the story, and I want to tell you the story of Abdullah ibn Abbas Radhilanhama. Imam Darmi has recorded the story in his introduction with an authentic chain of narration. Abdullah ibn Abbas is that Sahabi, that young Sahabi who was the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and who was at the time of the death of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was not even 18. According to the narrations, we find that he was only 13 years at the time of the death of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He is also a Sahabi, and we will find big Sahaba like Abu Bakr radhiallahu, 60 years almost at the time of the death, and both of them are Sahaba. Abdullah ibn Abbas is that Sahabi who was invited by Umar Radlaw for Mashwara along with the big Sahaba from Badr. And this young man, Abdullah ibn Abbas, also used to be among them. He is the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is among the top five narrators of Hadith. And most of his Hadith are those which he has learned from other Sahaba. He is the number one Sahabi in Tafsir. In fact, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had done dua for him. Allahumma faqihu fi deen wa allimhu taweel. Oh Allah, give him understanding of religion and teach him the tafsir of the Quran. So Allah's Messenger Muhammad وسلم, did this dua for him and gave him the title Tarjumanul Quran. And he is considered the number one Sahabi in tafsir. But look at his story. It's very interesting. He says, after the Prophet وسلم, died, I said to one of my friends from among the Ansar, he said, oh so and so, now the companions of the Prophet وسلم, are all living. Let us go to them and ask them and learn their knowledge. They are all living now. Let us go to them and seek their knowledge. So that Ansari friend said to him, Abdullah, do you think that with such big, big Sahaba there, us youngsters, we will be of any use? He said, they are such big scholars, big Sahaba. What use will we be? So Abdullah says, I left this friend and I started on my own. He says, I would go to a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam normally at the time when he would be doing Qailullah, the afternoon nap. I would go at that time and sit outside his door. I would spread my sheet and sit on the sheet. And he says that the hot wind of the desert would be coming on my face. I would just sit there and I would wait until he would come out for Asr Salah. He would say, Abdullah, why have you come? You should have called us. We would have come to you. He was a cousin of the Prophet ﷺ. He could have used that relationship. Abdullah says, I would say to them, I am more deserving that I should come. What do we learn? We learn that the student of knowledge should go to the scholar. So he says that in this manner, he went on and he learned from different, different Sahaba. Until there came a time when these big, big Sahaba, they started dying. And he says the time came when I was left and that young Ansari Sahabi was also left. Now they had grown up in age. He says at that time people started coming to me to learn knowledge. And at that time that Ansari Sahabi said, this young man was wiser than me. So what do we learn from this? Struggle. We also learn that we should go early for our classes. You will find Islamic lectures, Islamic classes where the teacher is sitting and waiting, ah, when will the students come? But we find that the right etiquette of getting knowledge is to go early for the class and to go and wait for the scholar, for the teacher. That creates a yearning in a person and that makes a person more receptive to knowledge. So this is point number two, struggle. There are some people who may be having good intentions. Point number one, revise with me. Number two, struggle. They struggle, but they fall into a third pit, a third obstacle which stops them from reaching authentic knowledge. And do you know what is that? The third obstacle is that these people are not cautious in acquiring knowledge. Only good intentions and effort is not enough, my brothers and sisters. We should acquire knowledge from authentic sources. We drink water. From where do we drink water? We have water purifiers, filters to clean the water. And then we have... Now there is water in the gutter. There is water in the sea. We don't drink that water. We drink purified water. Why? Our health will get spoiled. When we buy gold, we know there is 24 karat gold, there is 16 karat gold, and there is something which shines, but it is not gold. So we check up. 
what is the authenticity what is the purity so that we get authentic pure gold isn't it my brothers and sisters we should know that when we talk of knowledge we should make sure we get authentic knowledge we should get knowledge from the quran the book of allah from the sayings of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the authentic hadith which are proven from him now some people in this they are a little confused i want to share with you something important my brothers and sisters times have gone by we are after 1400 years we are not sitting in front of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we listen to him directly what narrations come to us from him they come to us through certain sources there are in between in these 1400 years people who have fabricated who have lied in the name of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said about them man kadaba alayya mutaamidan falyatabawwa ma qadahu min an-nar it's recorded in sahih bukhari he said that the one who lies in my name he makes for himself a seat in the fire of hell so there are people who have lied in the name of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but all praise to allah he has protected this deen it is the deen of the people at the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it is the deen for the people who are going to come right before the day of judgment and it is allah who has protected this deen he has taken service from people there are people who served in the protection of the quran we find today there are copies of the quran in museums old copies which are word to word same with the copy it's in every muslim home but allah has protected the quran allah has also protected the sayings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam not only that we find that those narrators those sources more than 640000 such narrators who come in these times from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the recordings the muhaddisin have recorded we find that their biography their stories are found in the books of rijal and that too with chains of narration we find this with chains of narration that such and such narrator he used to say in such and such time such and such place so and so was his teacher was he reliable was he honest was he truthful we find all of these things recorded so now here comes a muhaddis a scholar in the field of hadith after 1400 years but he has the data and information available so he can check and that too with proof this is not a field of assumption oh i like this hadith this is sahih hadith and this hadith doesn't look good this zaif hadith this is not the way it is all with proof so it's all praise to allah subhanahu wa taala due to which even today my brothers and sisters it can be segregated conclusively there are difference of opinions there are times when the scholars of hadith also have differences of opinion but we can ask them for their proof and go a step further in the checking and get to know that such and such scholar has strong proof such and such scholar maybe he made a mistake so my brothers and sisters this is the religion of proof so now what should be our approach our approach should be that there are some people who tell things which are mixed they say hadith is a hadith sahi zaif mauzu it's at least a hadith my brothers and sisters these three categories inshallah we will look at them more in detail when we come to that subject in this course inshallah but right now let's listen to this much at least everything is not authentic there are fabricated hadith which is a serious sin we saw what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he makes for himself a seat in the fire of hell and there are zaif ahadith weak ahadith and weak ahadith my brothers and sisters we find that the scholars of hadith have pointed out for us the ruling they have shared with us the proof imam bukhari imam muslim and so many other scholars they say allah has said in the quran wala taqfu ma laysa lak bihi ilm don't follow that of which you have no knowledge you don't have knowledge don't follow what is not confirmed don't follow so what should we do follow that which is confirmed it's mentioned in the quran that the jews and the christians ma lahum bihi min ilm illa tibazan they don't have confirmed knowledge they follow assumptions we don't follow assumptions we follow confirmed knowledge it's recorded in sunan tirmidhi with authentic chain of narration that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said da ma yuribuk ila ma la yuribuk leave that in which there is doubt for that in which there is no doubt leave the doubtful things so how wise was ibn sirin the tabai he said inna hadha al-ilm din this ilm is your religion fanzuru amman taakhuzuna dinakum you should look at whom are you getting your religion from you should look at that 
So my brothers and sisters, this is very important that we should get knowledge from authentic sources. And we should take care of this. And Allah has said in the Quran, in Surah Hujurat, Surah 49, verse 6, Ya ayyu alladheena amanu, O you who believe, in jaakum fasiqum bi nabain fatabayyanu. If a fasiq, if an evildoer comes to you with some news, check it up. And we have to check up who this person is. Is he a fasiq or is he a reliable person? We have to confirm information. Don't open a bag of snakes, then you're not able to control it. Get it from authentic sources. So just having good intentions is not enough. Just working hard, mujahida, that's step two, is also not enough. The third point is seeking knowledge from authentic sources. Acquiring knowledge from authentic sources. Remember this as caution in acquiring knowledge. Point number three. There are people who have good intentions, maybe. They also work hard, maybe. They also may be acquiring from good authentic sources, but they fall into a fourth pit. And that is, they don't share their knowledge with people. So we should share our ilm with people. We have the famous hadith of the Prophet wasallam where he said, Ballego anni walau aya. Pass it on from me, even if it is one verse. And we know another hadith from Sunan Tirmidhi, authentic chain of narration. He said, Not Allah humran. May Allah keep him hale and hearty. Samiya minna hadithan. Who hears a saying of mine, Fahafizahu, memorizes it. Hatta yuballigahu gairahu. Until he tells it to someone else. So my brothers and sisters, passing on is connected to keeping knowledge. And we find today in modern researches, people have studied this. And people have discovered this. I will quote a study, it's on your screen. Tests were done on batches of students. They were made to listen to a lecture. And then they were asked, what did you hear? The retention was 5%. They remembered 5% of what they heard. Then they were given something to read. Read this. They read it. What did you read? They found that the retention was 10%. They remembered 10%. But among the different methods, finally when they checked one method, they gave information and material to the student. They said, you study this, now you teach. You teach. It was found that after teaching, the student remembered 90%. The retention was 90%. Now the Prophet ﷺ said, pass it on from me even if it is one verse. So when we pass it on, our retention is 90%. Subhanallah, minimum. This is a way of revision. However, there is caution in this. It should not be we hear one thing and we pass on 10 things. There are some people who are very, very careless about this. The Prophet ﷺ did not say, pass on anything, pass on anything. He said, Ballego anni aya. Pass it on from me, even if it is one verse. You know one verse, pass it on. It should be from the Prophet ﷺ. And when we look at this hadith in Sahih Bukhari, the book of the Prophets, we find that in the same hadith, there is a section after this, in this very same hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man the person who lies in my name, he makes for himself a seat in the fire of hell. Same hadith. So the very same hadith, it has the accelerator, it also has the brake. It's very important to have caution. So don't destroy your akhara because this is a sin, a very major sin to narrate a lie in the name of the Prophet ﷺ. This is religion. We have to have caution. We have to be particular. As Abdullah ibn Masood, he said, Man alima fal yaqul. The one who knows, let him speak. وَمَلَّمْ يَعْلَمْ The one who does not know فَلْيَقُلْ اللَّهُ عَالَمْ He should say Allah knows فَإِنَّ مِنَ الْإِلْمِ He said this is from knowledge أَنْ يَقُولَ لِمَا لَا يَعْلَمُ لَا عَالَمُ That the one who does not know He should say I don't know He said this is knowledge This is knowledge That the person who doesn't know He should say I don't know If we say we don't know We are safe He says فَإِنَّ مِنَ الْإِلْمِ This is knowledge How is this knowledge? He doesn't know How is this knowledge? He says that this is ilm. If we ponder about it, at least he knows that he doesn't know. There are people who don't know and they don't know that they don't know. This is double ignorance. Compound jahil. There is a simple jahil and there is a compound jahil. A person who doesn't know and he knows that I don't know. But there is a person who doesn't know and he doesn't know that he doesn't know. So now when we don't know, it's better that we be from the simple jahils rather than be from the compound jahil. And he said, this is knowledge. So my brothers and sisters, our point number four is 
that we should pass on authentic knowledge but have caution in passing it on. Let us revise. Point number one was good intention. Point number two is mujahida, struggle. Point number three, caution in acquiring knowledge. Point number four, passing on the knowledge and caution in passing on the knowledge. There are people who do all four but they fall in the fifth pit. What is this fifth pit? That knowledge should be acquired according to its importance. As Ibn Jawsi, Rahimahullah, he said something so wise in his book, Talbis e Iblis, The Deceptions of Shaitan, Iblis. He said, If life was so big that you could understand, get the knowledge of everything, it would be good. But life is short. So for that reason, we have to give priority to that which is important, more important and has more fazilat, more virtues, more benefits in it. So my brothers and sisters, we should prioritize in seeking knowledge. And which is the most important knowledge? The most important knowledge is ilm about Allah. Who is our Lord? What does he want from us? How should we understand the correct belief about Allah? Because Allah has said, Inna Allah, la yushraka bih. Allah will never forgive that you join partners with him. Surah Nisa, Surah 4, verse 48. How do we maintain the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can we avoid the sin of joining partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, Iman and belief is number one. If there is problem in the Iman, then it's like you lose out everything. So my brothers and sisters, we have to prioritize. For example, when we come to Ibadah, Salah, we are offering Salah five times a day. Now, if a person even learns one thing about Salah, one mistake we correct, then my brothers and sisters, we can correct that in every single rakah. We can correct that in every single Salah we pray. So finally, when we stand before Allah on the day of judgment, our scale of deeds will have such a big difference by even correcting one mistake in Salah. So don't you think it is important that we should learn the method of the Prophet ﷺ. How did he pray? And let us benefit from the knowledge of the scholars so that we can correct our salah. For example, if a person is left in a big room which has lots of treasures, gold, silver, diamonds. It also has a lot of furniture, boxes, cartons. If you are given five minutes, take all that you want. Now what will you take? Will you take the furniture? Okay, I'll take this furniture. This table looks useful. Or will, will you go for the more precious things? So when life is short, we should have this intelligence. As scholars have pointed that find the awwala darja to zakah. The very first level of first basic level of intelligence is that the student of knowledge should start with alaham fal muhim. The most important, then what is lesser, then what is lesser. According to importance, this is smartness. Because life is short and we are living our life. We don't know when we will go before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us get that which is the most beneficial. So my brothers and sisters, this is a very important rule in seeking knowledge. It is not what looks the most attractive. At times, important things are a little bit boring also. Some people are more interested in attractive lectures where they get the same ilm again and again. When it's more important for them to learn something, you need to learn the masail of tahara. You, if you're a businessman, you should know the first six conditions for a business deal to be correct. A business deal to be correct, what are the conditions? We should know these things, my brothers and sisters. So we should know alaham fal muhim, the most important first, then lesser, then lesser. For example, when you're traveling by an airline and you know only 30 kgs allowed, 40 kgs allowed, what do you take with you? Do you carry the furniture of your house? Or do you look at, okay, what is the most important for me? Alaham fal muhim, we do that in this world. We should do it for the most important pursuit, the pursuit towards knowledge. This is point number five. Let's revise. Point number one, good intention. Point number two, revise with me. Point number two, mujahida, struggle. Point number three, caution in acquiring knowledge. Point number four, passing on the knowledge. Don't let the treasure just die with you. Pass it on. Passing on the knowledge and caution in passing on the knowledge. Point number five, going according to the importance. Point number six, and if you notice, these points are in pairs. First two are connected, intention, action. Second two, caution in acquiring knowledge, passing on knowledge. 
Now these two are also connected. They are like pairs. It helps you to remember, inshallah. And we find that this point is going step by step. This is a common problem. When people want to seek knowledge, they say, I want all of it. And now, now this is not the way to get it. There are people who say, okay, now I've got the desire to get knowledge. So they take the biggest book, Sahih Bukhari, I'm going to read Sahih Bukhari. And you start with Sahih Bukhari, first few pages and it's becoming burdensome, it's becoming heavy, then I left it. And you left it, you left all the pursuit of knowledge. This should not be the case. Let's start with small books. You see how Allah sent down the Quran. The Quran is Khair al Hadithi Kitabullah. The best narration is the book of Allah. But Allah sent it down some verses at a time. We find the smaller surahs were revealed before the longer surahs. There is wisdom in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What He sent down. It's given in the Quran in Surah Furqan, Surah 25, verse 32. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Those who do not believe, the disbelievers, they say, لَوْلَا نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنِ جُمْلَةً وَاحِدًا Why is the Quran not revealed to him all at once? So Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فُوَادَكَ It is so, so that it may give strength to your heart. وَرَطَّلْنَاهُ تَرْتِيلًا We have sent down in stages. So the Quran has been sent down in stages. There is wisdom in it, my brothers and sisters. So what should we do? Start with something small, inshallah. Read a small book. Finish it. What you start, finish it, inshallah. Then go on to something bigger, 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 bigger. Start reading the Quran, some pages at a time. Then go on to more, then more. And inshallah, go on to more detailed tafsirs of the Quran. You can start with something small. We find in the books of Hadith, scholars have written books like, for example, Imam Nawawi wrote the book Arba'in an nawawi The 40 Hadiths by an nawawi so you learn, you study these 40, which Imam Nawawi has selected. They go on to something bigger and bigger. And one day, inshallah, you read Sahih Bukhari also. Nobody's stopping you. So there are people who don't get this. Then they start reading only the first page and skip the book and go to the ending. And there are people who start listening to a lecture and no, 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 go on to something else. Then there is no completion. There's no accomplishment. There's no sense of fulfillment. And this is very important. We go step by step. This is how Allah has put in the nature around us. A child is born, we don't give him a bone to eat. There's a time he will eat the bone, but it, it'll take time. He doesn't start running the day he's born. He'll come to the stage of crawling one day, moving, crawling, and then finally start walking and then running. A tree doesn't grow up and shoot toop at all one, one time. It starts with a seed, a small sprout, a small plant, and then grows into a tree one day. So even if there's very yummy food, very beautiful food, we won't eat it all at once. We will go one morsel at one time. Isn't it, my brothers and sisters? So we should go step by step, but consistent steps. Go on and on and on. Regular, regular, regular. Stay at it. Step by step. Every step you move on, you'll inshallah move to bigger and bigger goals. But start with small things, inshallah. This is point number six. Point number seven. There are people who may not have fallen into the six pitfalls. They fall into the seventh pitfall. And what is it? You will listen to their story. Maybe one of you may have a similar story. They say, when I was young, when I was this age, I used to listen to Islamic lectures. At that time, when I used to stay there, I used to attend Dhruz lectures. I used to listen to audios, videos, CDs, DVDs, lectures. I used to read books. I used to do this. I used to do that. Then they stopped. Do you know why? This is when a person doesn't have that persistent thirst for knowledge, which is called Tualabu Ziyada, the desire, the thirst for more, this should be there. If you don't have it, very soon you are going to say, I used to listen to this lecture. I used to follow this course. I used to study. This should not be in the past tense. It should be in the present tense. It should be until we are alive. Because the path to Jannah becomes easy for the person who seeks knowledge for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, this thirst, consistent thirst, hunger should be there. Hates, greed. Now greed is bad, as you know, I told the hadith, but greed for knowledge is good. We have an example in Sahih Bukhari, where once Abu Huraira asked this question to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Abu Huraira knew you will be the first person to ask me this question because hirsik al-hadith, the greed which you have for hadith. So the greed for hadith, the greed for ilm is good ilm. is good greed. Allah has taught us in the Quran. 
وقل ربي زدني علما and say oh my lord increase me in knowledge so my brothers and sisters we should seek knowledge and we should have that thirst for knowledge this is good alhamdulillah and we should take care of this so this is very important for all of us that we should acquire knowledge focus on it and have the greed we should have that desire for more and more and do you know what shaitan says shaitan says oh now you know everything and the day you feel i know everything that's the day decline starts we should remember the fact and the truth about this is when you have little knowledge you feel i know everything but when you have more knowledge you realize oh i don't know these many things and when you learn those many things you realize oh, i don't know so many other things the more you know the more you know how much you don't know and when you don't know you think you know everything and when you know more and more you realize how much more you don't know so this is the reality and we should have that talabu ziyada the greed and the desire for more this is point number 7 point number 8 some people may have saved themselves from the seven pitfalls but they fall into the eight pit and that is arrogance being proud about it and allah does not love pride You know the hadith of Sahih Muslim the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said la yadkhulul jannata man kana fi qalbihi mithqalu dharrati min kibr that person will not go in jannah the one who has in his heart even a mustard seed worth of pride if a person has even little bit of pride and arrogance la yadkhulul jannah he will not go to jannah the one who has even the mustard seed worth of pride even that much pride he has that much arrogance he has he will not go to janna now shaitan says ah oh, look at you you have so much knowledge and look at the others they, they don't know anything and you know all of this look at them and look at you ha huh? you are so great you are so great and these people are so foolish and you are so great you have knowledge so when a person gets this feeling la yadkhul al janna auzu billah allah mustaan we seek allah's refuge from this my brothers and sisters don't let this happen with you knowledge is a sign of goodness from allah subhanahu wa taala but if shaitan makes us fail with this then this is our loss this is a fruit of knowledge which should come we should not have arrogance we should be humble what did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam teach us it's recorded in sahih muslim the one who is humble for the sake of allah allah raises him high allah raises that person high and allah has said in the quran in surah nisa surah 4 verse 36 inna allah la yuhibbu man kana mukhtalan fakhura allah does not love the self deluding the boastful the arrogant person allah doesn't love these people allah doesn't like these people my brothers and sisters we should take care of this and save our hearts from this there are people who may have saved themselves from these eight pitfalls but they fall into the ninth pit and what is this ninth pit first let's revise first niya intention our intention should be for allah second mujahida struggle only good intention is not enough we have to work for it third point caution in acquiring knowledge fourth point passing on the knowledge and caution in passing on knowledge fifth point is alaham fal muhim according to the importance the most important thing first and then lesser and then lesser sixth point is tadarruj going step by step step by step but consistently point number 7 is getting that thirst talabu ziyada the thirst for more and more and more and more i want more i want more until i live i want more and more of knowledge this is good allah has taught us to ask for more rabbi zidni ilma this is point number 7 point number 8 saving ourselves from arrogance and being humble for whose sake for allah's sake and we are humble for allah allah raises that person high the day a person gets this feeling that he is great and he is someone very great and he gets that pride and looks down batar an nas he looks down on people this day he is gone and my brothers and sisters don't use this to judge people look at yourself don't look at others ha huh? that person you leave his matter to allah we don't know what is in the hearts of people we know we have to check our heart let's go on to point number 9 the ninth pitfall when you are doing so much you are seeking knowledge you are seeking knowledge you are acquiring knowledge you are walking on the path of seeking knowledge your intention is inshallah good but are you feeling something inside are you feeling taqwa is your heart moving with what you are learning 
the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. He said, "Lo ta'alamuna ma alamu lo dhuhiktum qalil wa la bakaytum kathir." If you knew what I know, you would cry a lot and you would laugh very little. If you knew what I know, so when you get knowledge, it changes you. It makes you feel something inside, and it's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Fatir, Surah number thirty-five, verse number twenty-eight. Inna ma yaqsha Allah min ibadihi ulama. Indeed, from the slaves of Allah, those people fear Him who are the ones of knowledge. The people of knowledge, those who have knowledge, they fear Allah. Yaqsha Allah. They fear Allah. When you have knowledge which has been sought for the sake of Allah's pleasure. it brings taqwa it makes a person fear allah if that fear of allah is not there so my brothers and sisters something has gone wrong are you feeling that taqwa are you feeling it inside it should not be you miss this out this is the fruit of knowledge when you get knowledge this is the fruit of knowledge the more your knowledge increases the more the fear of allah yakhsha allah more the fear of allah should increase if it's not increasing something is wrong go and look into it go and correct yourself we should feel that fear of allah subhanahu wa taala and this is the beauty my brothers and sisters this is what knowledge brings this is point number 9 and my last point our last point for today point number 10 the 10th pit for someone may save himself from nine pits but may fall into the 10th pit and what is this 10th pit it is are you acting on knowledge are you doing amal on the ilm on the knowledge which you learnt are you doing it or not if we are not doing it we are losing it's our loss allah says wa tansaun anfusakum do you forget yourself allah says in that verse surah baqarah was 44 afala taqilun don't you have aql aren't you intelligent my brothers and sisters don't forget yourself we should remember it's recorded in sunan tirmidhi with authentic chain of narration that on the day of judgment a person will not be able to move his his feet la tazulu qadamu ibn adam yawm al qiyamah min indi rabbi a person will not be able to even move his feet in front of his lord hatta yusalu an khams until he does not reply to five questions and among the five questions the fifth question is madha amila fi ma alima what did you do what amal you did on that which you knew what you knew what amal you did on it what did you act on it so my brothers and sisters we should be foremost inshallah in acting on what we know and this is the fruit of ilm when you are acquiring knowledge the smell of that should be there in your action as scholars have pointed out and how beautifully they have said they said knowledge knocks on the door of amal if amal opens the door knowledge will stay otherwise knowledge will go away that knowledge which we act on that knowledge gets preserved by our action so we should act on it there is a very dangerous hadith in sahih bukhari where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us he said you jaw bi rajuli yawm al qiyama fa yulqa fi an nar a person will be brought on the day of judgment and he will be thrown in the fire of hell fa tandaliqu aktabuhu fi an nar his intestines will come out in the fire of hell فَيَدُورُ كَمَا يَدُورُ الْحِمَارُ بِرَهَاهُ He will start going round and round, circumambulating in the fire. فَيَجْتَمِيُ أَهْلَ النَّارِ أَلَيْهِ The people of fire will gather round him. Will say, "Ay fula, ma shanuk." Will say, "Oh so and so, what is your matter?" أَلَيْسَ كُنْتَ تَأْمُرُنَا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Aren't you the one who used to tell us to do good deeds? وَتَنْهَانَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ And you used to stop us from doing bad deeds. He will say. amrukum bil ma'ruf wa latihi he will say i used to tell you to do good deeds but i used to not do good deeds myself wa anhakum anil munkari wa atihi i used to stop you from bad deeds but i used to do bad deeds myself so now where is he he is in the fire of hell his intestines are out and he is humiliated in the fire of hell my brothers and sisters this should not happen with one of us so we should act on ilm inshallah ask allah's help seek knowledge with the sincere intention and when you have sincere intention inshallah it will take you to amal it will take you to amal continue to look at sincerity in your action 
and it will create that feeling which will push you towards amal inshallah and act on it. So these are 10 pitfalls, 10 obstructions on the path of seeking knowledge. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us revise once again before we finish this lecture with a beautiful dua. Our division, point number one, good intention. If you don't have good intention, it's lost. Point number two, mujahida, struggle. Only good intention is not enough. We need action. And real good intention will take you to action. Point number three, caution in acquiring knowledge. Point number four, passing on the knowledge. And caution in passing on the knowledge. Point number five, going according to the importance. Al-aham, fal-muhim. Point number six, tadarruj. Going stages after stages. Gradually, step by step, consistently. Point number seven, having that thirst, having that greed. Ha, greed is good. Greed, thirst for knowledge. Talabu ziyada. The greed for more. Rabbi zidni ilma. Ask for Allah, increase me in knowledge. Point number eight, avoid arrogance. Avoid pride. Be humble for Allah's sake. Allah will give you great reward in this dunya and akhira. Point number eight. Point number nine. Are you feeling something inside? Taqwa. Ilm produces taqwa. This is from the fruits of knowledge. And point number ten is amal. Is amal on knowledge. We do dua to Allah. Oh Allah, because of those who realize the importance of knowledge. Oh Allah, because of those who seek knowledge only for your pleasure. With good intentions. Such intentions that you are pleased with. Oh Allah, makers of those who work hard, who struggle and who put in efforts for the sake of acquiring knowledge. Oh Allah, makers of those who acquire knowledge from sources which are proven knowledge, which is really the knowledge of your deen, which is proven from your beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And oh Allah, makers of those who acquire this knowledge from its pure sources. Oh Allah, makers of those who pass on this knowledge to people, to save people, from the fire of hell. Pass on this message of your deen to people. O Allah, make us of those who pass on this knowledge with authenticity, with preservation, in the manner, in the authenticity which we have got from your Prophet O Allah, make us of those who acquire knowledge according to its importance. The most important things, the first in our lives. O Allah, make us of those who go step by step consistently and acquire knowledge. O Allah, make us of those who have that constant thirst to acquire more and more of your knowledge. O Allah, make us of those who are humble and save us from arrogance, save us from boastfulness, save us from pride. O Allah, make us of those who are humble, whom you love. O Allah, make us of those who have taqwa, who have taqwa in their hearts, who have your fear in their hearts. O Allah, make us of those who act on the knowledge, who do amal on the knowledge. O Allah, make us of those who are constant and consistent and who are strong in their iman and give us an ending such that you are pleased with. Ameen. Wa akhir dawana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah. This series is sponsored by one of our brother in Islam for Sadqai Jariya of his family. Aise hi aur videos banane mein hamari madad karein. 